Okay, welcome to my video. Um, <clears throat> this video is to kind of show indie developers how to get started. So I think this will hopefully be useful for those who want to get started but don't know how, um, because a lot of the time it can be very confusing and there's just so much stuff to, to look at when you start indie developing. So I'm going to start from complete scratch, um, including finding art for you guys. So the first thing we're going to actually do is we're going to look for art. So we're going to search up RPG assets free on itch. So we're making an RPG game, obviously. Um, so itch.io is actually just a website that I really like to use. There's a lot of artists and a lot of uh, indie developers on there as well who like to upload their shit. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to search up RPG, is the genre we're using, assets. If you don't know what assets are, assets are just like the art or um, can be music. It's just the assets of the game, so the, the things that you're going to be using. Um, and then we'll obviously we want it to be free. Uh, you can do paid if you want. But this is all free, most of it. Some of it's paid. You can see that it's like minus 50%. Um, some of them, if I go down here, some of them might have a free one. Yeah, so this one has a free one, and then it also has a paid one. So it's kind of like, let's actually download it and take a look. So if I download for free completely, I can take a look here. I get a character, a player that has walk, walk, uh, attack, and I think that is it. There is no up walk, so this is just like a platformer almost, um, which I don't want. There's also a chest, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of other stuff in there. So you can feel free to use whatever you want. Um, okay, let's close that. Um, the one I'm going to use, is I'm actually going to use the 12, by 12. Um, no, you know what? Let's use this guy. Let's use the Mystic Woods one by Game Endeavor. Uh, he's another YouTuber. If you guys don't know him, you should definitely check him out. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going to download this. So download that. It's now in my files. It's in my download files. Unzip it. So if you don't know how to unzip it, <laughs> good fucking luck becoming an indie developer. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you don't know how to unzip something, good luck. You've got to figure it out. Um, look for another YouTube video, I guess. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, it should be very simple for you guys. Um, so if you open the file, you'll find the README. It'll say, you can only use these in non-commercial projects. Um, you can modify the assets. You cannot redistribute or resale. So meaning, uh, if you finish a game with this, these assets, you cannot use it to put it on the Play Store and make money. You can put it on the Play Store, but you can't make money off of it. Otherwise, it's technically illegal. Um, but for me, I'm not going to use it to do anything. I'm just going to use it to make this video. So <clears throat> you guys can also download this one. Uh, you can look through the other ones as well and find anything else you think is interesting. Like, I was looking at this one before, and I thought oh, I might use it. But uh, honestly, I think it's fine. I'm not going to use it. Um, but yeah, this one also has character, full asset pack, etc. But yeah, now let's get started in our RPG game. So if you open Godot, this is Godot 3.5. And I'm going to make a new project. So now we have to find where to put it. I'm going to put it in my downloads file because that's where I like to put my stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna name this RPG YouTube Tutorial. And I'm gonna create folder, and it's just gonna create a folder because it needs to be empty. And then I'm going to do OpenGL ES 2.0. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because if our game is in 2D, um, completely 2D, it's completely pixelated, uh, it doesn't require too many features, right? Um, the, the sum features are very, high end so if you're doing a mobile game especially they just do 2.0 if you're doing like a really high end game 3.0 is fine as well um, but for us we're just going to be doing 2.0 because it's going to be relatively simple um, so let's do 2.0 name whatever you want and then create an edit okay before we even start importing anything we're going to go to um, 2d 
and we're going to drag it, the icon onto the screen. And if we zoom in, we can see it's kind of blurry, right? The reason is if we go into import on the top left and unclick filter and re-import, it'll unpixelate kind of, or it'll become pixelated, unblurry, I suppose you can say. Um, so what we're gonna do is we want this to be our default, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do preset 2D pixel, re, uh, not re import, sorry. And then we're gonna set as texture. Um, set as default for texture, I believe. Okay, and now, if this doesn't work, it'll be kind of embarrassing, um, but I'm pretty sure. Now, if you drag in all the files from the game we just downloaded, you'll be able to see, if we drag this in, it is now pixelated. If you tried doing this without any of the steps that I just did, it'll become uh, blurry. So for example, if I, no, I'm not gonna show you an example, but if you did, if you tried to do that without uh, setting this as the default, that's fine. Um, what you can do, it's a bit of a bit annoying, but what you can do is you can re-import it and then turn off filter. So if I re-imported it and turned it on, this is what you should get. So if I turn it off, re-import, it'll become pixelated again. So I'm gonna delete this. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys. In our scene, hopefully this isn't the first time you've seen Godot. If it is though, that's okay. I'm gonna try to introduce everything one step at a time. So in Godot, we have something called nodes and main node, etc. So all the things on the left are called nodes. So you can filter node, meaning like you can search it up. So icon, it'll pop up icon. So I'm gonna delete all this and I'm going to start a new 2D scene. So this is gonna be our main scene. I'm gonna call this main, mm, main menu. Let's have a main menu first, and then let's, let's do our main menu, and then we'll do our main world. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do on our main menu is we're going to add a button. And in Godot, there are a bunch of buttons, so a button is also a node, but the button is something we can actually use and click, right? So there's a bunch of different buttons, texture button, you can read it. It's basically something you can put a picture on. I use this a lot. Um, touch screen button is for touch play, gameplay use. Um, it's very similar to touch texture button because it does need um, a picture as well. But yeah, I actually use both a lot. Um, but for now, we're gonna use, uh, no, sorry not texture button, I trolled myself. We're gonna use the regular button. So this button is just a standard button. So if I live test by selecting current, I can now click it, right? This is our button, it has a highlight. So if I hover it, it's hover, um, and you can also click it. And then we can set the text to play. So this will be our play button. So if I click play, I want to go into our world. So to do that, I need to make a world scene. So this will be our world scene. So I save it, I'm gonna save it in the main file. You can start making files for this if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. Um, yeah, and so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a script. I'm gonna rename this first to main menu. And then I'm gonna add a script to the main menu. And I'm not going to make it built in. Um, I'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, but anyways, just to move on a little quickly, I'm gonna delete all this code. We don't need any of it, it's mostly comments. Um, now, if I go back to 2D on top, go to button, make sure my button is selected. I'm gonna to go to the node. So we have the inspector usually. The inspector has all the stuff that I can use or edit on the button itself. So we have text, icon, flat, um, whatever. There's a bunch of stuff. Honestly, I've also never used some of these. So you can look through them and see what they do. But for now, all we used is text, that's it. You can add an icon as well. So if I did this icon, it'll pop that in. But I don't want that, I'm gonna leave it empty. So for node, I'm going to check, these are basically the actions that happen within this node, within this button. So the base button is, is exclusive to this button. The control and everything else is kind of global in the sense that everything else might have it as well. So like node has like ready, rename, 
and this one has node, ready, rename, and tree entered, etc. So there's a lot of common functions built into each node, but the button has all of these. And the one we're going to want to use is the pressed button. So we're going to look at when the button is pressed, what are we going to do? Well, we want to move to another scene. So to do that, um, I might be wrong, and I might have to double check, but we get tree, and then we... Um, okay, I actually need to look this up. I'm actually going to open my reference real quick. Uh, hopefully I edit this out. Okay, it is change scene, so not go to, change scene, and then we're going to select the world. There we go. I figured it out. I'm not stupid. Um, yeah, so this is our main code, and what this will do is literally just take us to the next scene. So there's nothing here. Um, so let's add a label. So what a label is, is text. So if I tech type in a bunch of stuff, Oh, this, ah, this is the world. So now we have a text that says this is the world. So if I play it, or if I live test, I play, we go to the this is the world. Okay, so now we have a working game. Um, this is how to get started with indie dev. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Um, next video, we will be adding a player and we will be adding a bunch of stuff and movements and etc. Um, but I will end the video on one more note. Um, Google is your best friend when it comes to indie dev, dev uh, when you're starting as an indie developer. So right now we searched up a bunch of art that we're going to use. Another thing you can do is you can ask how to change scenes in Godot. And I'll be showing you guys next video, um, something that we're gonna be doing similar, how to load and change scenes. So if I click this, uh, the, there's documents and there's also questions. So this is a question someone else asked. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but you can see the answers and this is the simplest way, change scene, right? So that's what we did. You can also do this, but this is the easiest way. And that's what I want you guys to do. Um, that's what we did. But yeah, this is this was an intro to um, how to get started as an indie dev. Um, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, next video we'll be doing a bit more, so we'll actually get started with um, coding a bit more, and we'll make our player in the world that we're creating. So thanks for watching. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, share the video with anyone who you think wants to get started as an indie dev um, or anything like that. But yeah. For now, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to end the video here.